Good morning. Welcome back to In the Garden. Paul and Taft here. And Paul, last week we were talking about those trees that we can plant that are going to do really well here. Today we're going to talk about tried and true shrubs. What are we talking about here first? This first one is the spirea. It's, it's pretty common, but it has just so many different uses in the garden. As a hedge, as a specimen, well, it does well in containers. Really pretty. These are deciduous and they get these beautiful flowers, usually in a pink, and they'll come on in the summer and continue a little bit into fall. So really nice, durable, easy to grow, tried and true shrub. Now there's some behind us if you want to do an about face. Let's go. And go. All right, Paul, here's what we're talking about now, abelia. Yeah, um, somewhat similar in appearance in terms of the leaf form to the spirea, but another deciduous shrub, beautiful flowering shrub, stays pretty small, although there are some big varieties. Most of them stay pretty small. Can you hear that cicada? I can hear it already. I love the sound of those things. Um, but uh, tried and true. I mean, just a great performer, easy to grow, tolerates a lot of different conditions in the yard. So something, and again, could be used as a hedge, a specimen, in containers, just so many ways to use it. And just a slight difference from what we saw with the spirea. Yep, hard to beat though, and the pollinators love them. We've got some little critters floating around those flowers right now. All over them. Okay, now we gotta take a walk. Okay. All right, Paul, now we're talking about the Nandina. I've heard a lot about Nandina, don't know too much about it. Well, uh, sometimes called heavenly bamboo, although it's not a bamboo at all. Okay. Uh, so no worry about it spreading. But the old form is pretty tall and upright, but there's so many new introductions that have this beautiful foliage. Really and nice. these are evergreens, by the way. Okay. So you get that magnificent color in the new growth especially. So these, again, you can use them in so many different ways and the, as an accent, hedge, however you want to use them. But man, oh man, they're, they're just almost foolproof. I think you could grow them successfully. I think so. I'm feeling better and better about that. <laughs> There's some more down here. Okay, let's go over there. Okay, Paul, now we're to another interesting shrub, the privet. Yeah, you know, privet gets a bad rap because the common privet or Chinese privet can be pretty invasive. Birds will eat the seeds and then deposit them all over your yard and they can be a mess. <laughs> These are tame. Now this is the noble privet, which is a larger leaf variety, okay. and this is a great alternative to photinia, which is planted a lot in this area. It's, photinia is fine, but this is a good alternative. This is the variegated privet, okay. and my favorite is a new introduction. I just planted one of these last weekend called Sunshine, and that's three to five feet. Uh, you can actually shear it and keep it lower. This will get pretty large, but you can also I mean, eight to 10 feet, but you can also shear it and keep it smaller. I love the privets. Yeah, a couple of nice variations here. Now, we were talking about the Nand Nandinas just a second ago and how they are an evergreen. The privet is a semi-evergreen. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's a, a term that basically says if we have a really nasty, cold, dry winter, you may lose most of the leaves. Okay. If we have a mild winter, chances are they're going to look just like this all through the winter. So you take your chances a little bit, but the plants themselves are completely hardy, so they'll rebound come spring. Yeah, as beautiful as they are, going to plant it, doesn't matter what, the winter's going to hold for us. Okay, I got one more batch to show you. Okay, let's go over there. All right, Taff, this last group, these are the Euonymus. Uh, you see these planted all over the place, really rugged, carefree, but interestingly, there's two different types. There's the deciduous version, like this burning bush. This gives you some of the most spectacular fall color you'll ever see. I mean, people will stop and knock on your door and say, what is that? <laughs> uh, long about mid-October or so. And then you get into the evergreen forms. This is a beautiful variegated leaf form. I mean, just beautiful color, nice erect stems, a great grower. And then one of my favorites is that, sorry, I got a spider on my cheek. <laughs> Uh, Feel them out here. <laughs> is this one right here? This is green spire, and I just think that the the leaf form and the stems, it, 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 just a really really beautiful plant. And you're looking at six to eight feet by about two feet, so pretty upright, which is a real problem solver in a lot of landscapes. You want that vertical element. This is perfect. I love these. Uh, tolerant of a lot of different soil conditions. Can actually take uh, afternoon shade. So. Half day of sun is, is okay for most of these. Yeah, and it has such great characteristics with the, with the plants as well. You know, Paul, a great thing that we can actually get these in the ground right now, just in time for fall, and the brilliant colors that some of these are going to provide for us. Absolutely. Get that good root system established. They'll be fine all winter, and next spring they will take off. All right, so don't forget that you can still plant these throughout the fall as long as we don't have a freeze in the ground. You can get out there and plant some of these in the garden. That spider's on you now. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, keep hitting it. Got him.